What is going on everyone? Nico Lint here with my beautiful wife Melly. Hi guys. Um, and we are sitting at what used to be the Tipsy Seagull. I guess kind of still is, but obviously it's not open. Um, making a quick video here to kind of walk everyone through treasure, show you what's still here, where you can get groceries, where you can go get food, where the restaurants are, and what there is to do. And also to kind of give a little bit of update on where things stand right now with treasure. Um, you can see this is not much of a, um, a place to go, but fingers crossed there's some good news on the horizon um, regarding this whole area, which is the Treasure Key Resort and Marina Properties owned by Treasure Key Limited. Um, this used to be an absolutely super famous bar. Um, every single night here was bumping. Thursdays was pizza night. My wife, Melly actually never got to see it before the storm, sadly. sadly. I didn't, yeah. Oh. And so... It is what it is. I've tried to show her as many pictures and videos as I can. Um, just because we're here, if I can find any of my old pictures and videos from social media of this bar and me and my friends here, I'm going to go ahead and put it on the screen now. But it was an awesome spot. You had your Junk and New Javas over there that served some food. They served coffee. This was the bar. You had your bartenders, Judy, Caroline, and Rhea. They were awesome. Um, and it was just a fun time. It's hard to see it go. But the pizza night. Oh, that was awesome. But without further ado, we're just gonna walk you around treasure, show everyone where to go, what to do if you want to take a boat, where you could where you can go rent a boat, want to go get breakfast, where you can do that, all that good stuff. Um, I do wanna say before uh, we start that Melly and I, she actually doesn't know I'm about to say this, but we are very loosely in the beginning stages of considering moving here full time. Um, and so we would really like to, you know, if we can make it work monetarily, financially, we'd love to do it. Um, and so right now we like to move here. And I think one of the stages financially to be able to do it would be, would be, I am a captain. So being able to do some captain jobs over here, I'm U.S. Coast Guard licensed. And then also maybe doing some, you know, property management, estate management, whatever it is to make the money to, um, to keep, to make ends meet basically while we're living over here and getting our life started here. So if by any small chance anyone here watching um, is a property owner here, you know, and wants anything like that done or needs a captain or whatever it might be, let me know. Um, you know, we, we, we want to try to make it work. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, little, little, little detour. Just let me know if you guys have any ideas, if you need property managed, boats captain, whatever it might be. But without further ado, I'm going to walk all kind of around this tipsy area here and show you what... Um, what was it about? What it used to be. Yeah. And I'll, like I said, I'll implement some pictures and videos of what it used to be um, as we go. And before we get into this big main tour of Treasure Key, I do want to say, if you like this kind of stuff, if you like the Bahamas, Treasure Key, any of this stuff, subscribing to the channel is a huge help to me. And it really lets me know that there are people out there who are interested in this, you know, these, these updates I do to Treasure Key and the time and resources that I put into this island. I do it just because I love the place and I want to see it come back. Um, it's like our second home. It is. It is. It really is. And so it's it's a, it's a place that is special to my heart. And so subscribing lets me know that you guys are interested too and that you want to see me keep doing these kind of things. Um, but let's get into it. So this is the bar that Melly and I were just sitting behind. Um, you can see that not a whole lot has been done here. But in the last couple of months, they did clear out everything that's back here. So that is a good sign. This out here was the dance floor. You had your DJ booth up here with all your electronic controls back there. It, this was an awesome, awesome spot. I got some funny videos of friends up here pretending to DJ. I'll send some pictures. Let's go, Melly. What's your next set? Woo! Come on. And then this dance floor, man, every, the nights, especially around the 4th of July and New Year's, this would be absolutely loaded down. <laughs> My friends and I, even back in the day, we drove a golf cart up here one night in the middle of the party. That was something else. But over here, I just mentioned it, but this actually used to be Junkanoo Java's. It was a coffee bar where they served, they had coffee, but they also didn't open until 10, so it was a kind of strange coffee bar. But they also had food on pizza night Thursdays. That's where the pizza was made. You could also get food during the day. Out here, this was all tables out here. They had actually a pool table here in the last couple years all with a big roof on there with super nautical decorations. They had a giant marlin, um, taxidermized marlin, all that. They had all the seating in here. Again, all under cover. 
this was actually my corner. Every single night I came here, me and my friends would sit in this corner. And this was when I used to live here for like three months a year. And so I spent quite a bit of time at the bar. This was the famous pool. Again, anyone who spent time here at Treasure has probably spent a lot of time in this marina pool. Clearly, it has seen much, much better days. You want to go swimming, Melly? Let's do it. <laughs> oh yeah, jump in. <laughs> But no, this was not undercover, but this was packed during the days. They had chairs all around it. And then even on um, wild nights here at the Tipsy, usually a lot of people ended up in the pool afterwards having a good time. And then the dock, again, just more decks where they had chairs and tables and whatnot. The main dock that, in my opinion, was the best dock. This is where we kept our boats every year because we used to bring like four boats over here. You can see the stairs and that dock went out to a big face dock that you could probably fit like 110 footer on. Our boat stayed like in, I think it was slip S1, the very first slip on this dock because the dock master liked us. And so the next dock over would have been off this corner and it went out this way and then that way at the end. And so you can fit a bunch of boats here. The biggest, you know, coming because it went out and that way the boats that could fit along here, they could fit like 110 foot boats here. And then the remaining dockage where you can see that seawall over there, you had one long dock that started from over here and went all the way out there. And then you had another long dock that went over there and went all the way over there. And so this is currently the only docks that they actually have here at the moment. This one dock, that runs all the way that way. These are uh, charter, um, the charter boats and also the rental boats. I have kept the boat here before, but I just don't like it. I, I, don't, I don't feel safe doing it. But down there is if you want to rent a boat, this is where to go on Treasure Key. I'm going to put all the inf that information in the description below. You know, it's during the busy time, it's very, very busy. So if you want to rent a boat, I highly recommend reaching out beforehand. I'll put the, the number of who to call. His name's Wilson down below. Here's the man will hook you up. And then continuing around here, you can still see more of the pool. They had more chairs. This is kind of the lounging area that had the seat going all the way around. And then coming over here, this here was actually the marina office, and then on the other side was a gift store and a jewelry store. This side here was the marina office, and the door going on the other side was the gift store and jewelry store. This building hasn't been touched. You can see it's, I mean, way too far gone. They're never getting this one back. It's, it needs to be bulldozed completely. I'm not even going to go in there because I think it's a little bit too dangerous for my liking. But that was what that was. And then coming back around here, which the bar's here, if you came behind, these are where the bathrooms was, the men's and the girls, and they did cater to some of the sailboaters, so there were showers and stuff in there. You can see in relation, here's the DJ booth, here's the bar. And then you'd come back around, and you'd end up right over here, back where we started where Junk and New Java was. And then we're gonna move on, we're coming over here to as we go from this entire grass patch of the seawall all the way down there to where you see those condos this was the treasure key resort and marina condos they were um, big colorful buildings they had yellow ones blue ones like coral pink ones they were they were pretty nice you know nothing nothing too over the top but they were very nice and then there was boat slips that ran along the seawall going over there and they were pretty big boat slips they were also wide, so catamarans could fit in there. Uh, catamaran sailboats and power cats. So it was an awesome little spot. Get your little unit there, keep your boat out front. You had nothing to worry about. It was nice, but those got bulldozed right after the storm. And those, you know, there's really no plans to rebuild them. Whenever the next guy, um, the guy from Jacksonville comes in to do his plans. Um, I, I, I don't know what his plans are here, but when I learn, I'll find out. I doubt it will be the same thing. But you can see it's open, no docks whatsoever. And then we're gonna go over there in a second, but that is where all the stores here, which aren't much, but there's enough to, to live over here. That's where the stores are. And then in the back, that's all the old buildings and stuff, but we'll go drive over there. And then you can see here, this is the old roundabout that used to have the big tree in the middle. 
that was used to be able to bait and water and ice and stuff in there. Obviously not anymore, but in general, you know, you can see that it's everything's still destroyed. Nothing's been fixed. It's been cleaned up a little bit and there's little projects ongoing for sewage and all that kind of stuff, but for the most part it's completely untouched. So here is the state of everything. And one thing that I forgot to mention too is if you look here where I, where I said those two main docks came out, along this seawall here, there was all condos there. So it was super nice, get a condo, keep your boat in the marina. And then going down this side, those blue condos you see are Atlantis on the other side of the road. All along that seawall, there were dock slips and more condos. So there was quite a few places to stay here on the marina. It was a super, super awesome spot. Um, I just hope the next owner um, kind of brings it back at least somewhat similar to what it was. And you know, these condos, they were all pretty affordable. So I hope that the next owner kind of makes them, you know, pretty affordable to the average man. Someone who can come over here in a, you know, 30 foot center console that they saved up years to buy and be able to come over here and be able to do it effectively. But let's move on to the next area. I'll show you all where the shopping area is and all that good stuff. And one thing that I want to mention too, because we're right here and um, I mentioned the, the rental boats over there is anyone who wants to come over here and doesn't really know the area and you know, want, wants a guide, wants someone to go around, show them where things are, take them fishing, take them spear fishing, take them diving, take them to the pigs. Um, there's a company over here, um, Abaco Tours. Um, I, I'm friends with the owners, you know, they didn't ask me to do this, but I truly do believe they're the best in the area to, um, to do that. So if you guys want to come over here and you want a guide, you want a captain to take you around and show you all these places, I'm going to put their contact information in this video right here. And then also um, down in the description, I think the best thing you could do if you want is to reach out to them because, you know, there is a lot to do here on treasure and a lot of people don't come here because they think, oh, what's there to do? What's destroyed? No, you know, if you have a boat, it's awesome. If you have someone to show you around, it's really, really awesome. So if you come here and you want that, Avago Tours is the best in the business and I will put their contact information below on this video and then also in the description. All right, right around the golf cart now, we're gonna ride up to this blue strip mall, which that is currently the, where all the stores and everything are located on the island. And this end over here, you just have like a little home store. They have a bunch of gifts and, you know, stuff, hardware basically. Home hardware store, you can get whatever you need. Then next to it, you have a liquor store. They sell, you know, all kinds of liquor, wine, beer. It is a little bit expensive, but you're in the island, so you really can't, you can't expect too much. As we go further, the ones that y'all gonna care about. Bakery. Yes, this is Flo's Cafe. That is an absolutely legendary spot. She is an amazing baker, sells the best cinnamon rolls that you'll ever have in your life. Um, you have to go there. The breakfast is fantastic. That's the police station right there. Moving forward, you have a car rental spot. It's also a little gift shop. You can get in and get your regular stuff. And then next, this the little Mini shop Mart. here is the Treasure Key Mini Mart. They, it's a tiny little store. It's smaller than any even 7-Eleven out there, but they pack a punch. It always seems to have exactly what you're looking for. There's enough stuff where you can stay here on the island for you know a couple, you know, as long as you want. Still be able to find food, pasta, pasta sauce, meats drinks, whatever you want. This mini mart's gonna be your best friend if you're staying, spending time here. Surprisingly, they have enough of everything. And so we're gonna continue on here behind the shopping center for a second. This big pink building here, this used to be the front office basically for Treasure Key Limited and the Treasure Key Resort Marina. You know, if you were staying in any of the Treasure Key condos here or anything, this is where you would go. This is where you would go to check in all the boats and everything. And if you were in the marina, you check into the marina office, but this was the home of everything. I never frequented this much because we always had our own place here to stay, but you can see that it's not in great condition, really not doing well. But again, whoever buys it realistically is just gonna bulldoze this entire building. So really it doesn't matter much. And so here you, so this area where you see all the green and behind me get around these tractors here for a second. So this area here with this, all the rubble and the green, this used to be a big shopping center and they had Golden Harvest, which was the island grocery store. Used to be smack dab in the middle. That was actually a very big grocery store for an island. They had everything you could ever need, meats, pastas, cheeses, milks, 
you know, all it was basically it was a mini Publix. It was awesome. They had everything you needed, and then they actually had a a very good sized liquor store next to it. There is still the look the liquor store over there, but it's just not the same. And this one was a lot bigger. They also had a BTC, which is Batelco. That's one of the local cell phone carriers. They had an office there. They had a police station here. Um, they had all kinds of stuff here. But after the storm, this building was just damaged way too far beyond return. And so they ended up bulldozing it. And so it was tough to lose the old uh, <laughs> the grocery store because it was awesome and everything here. But again, realistically, this entire area, including this shopping center, all this, all these garages, this land. I think the next owner is probably going to bulldoze everything and start from scratch and almost build like a little village or, you know, maybe a hotel here. Who knows what it is, but, you know, sadly it made sense just to bulldoze that. Over here, you still have a bunch of garages and storage. You can rent those out, keep them, little boats, whatever you want. Over there, that's a little clinic. Um, the, you know, the, the doctor, the nurse who's and there's not here all the time, but when they are here, if you need anything, you have that to go get it. During COVID, that's where you had to go get, get go to get tested if you needed tests. That's the Tragic Community Center. They have a little library and all that. Awesome spot. But that's pretty much it for this area. That used to be a golf cart rental spot, but it's just not there anymore. And so that was the strip mall here. Used to be a strip mall here. Garages, clinic, um, Treasure Key Community Center. And then the Treasure Key Resort and Marina head office. But like I said, I, in my opinion, which is sad because I kind of like how small and low key and, um, you know, the island felt. In my opinion, though, this entire area is going to get bulldozed and turned into a, um, you know, something much bougier and much more high end. One thing that I do want to um, mention that I failed to mention when we were over there is there is a fuel here. Treasure Key does have a fuel dock and a gas station. It's down the road over there. I was there this morning and took some video, so I'll put that up on the screen right now. But the fuel dock's a little bit small and the pumps are a little bit small, slow, but it gets it done. Um, you know, there is fuel here if you want to stay here. There's a gas station. They sell ice. They have a reverse osmosis thing there so you can refill water there because I do not recommend drinking the tap water here. Definitely buy big bottles of water. They sell that at the mini mart. You can also refill them at the gas station. Yes. <laughs> and then, um, but yeah, so there, there is a fuel station. And then as we're coming up here, leaving the area where we just were with the shopping centers, you have these, all these little villas. These are the beach villas. And you can basically see it's just a bunch of, you know, hundreds probably of these little, you know, mini villas, two bedrooms. Some of them are split in half to be one bedroom suites. They are so um, nice. They are so nice. Melly we and stayed. I, yeah, we've stayed here before when the mm -hmm. condo is being rented and they're actually really nice. Um, you know, they're they're affordable, which is the biggest thing. Even to buy them, if some if you guys want to come over here and buy, you know, somewhere to stay, these are really affordable. A couple hundred thousand dollars, and you can have a very nicely spot. appointed mm -hmm. spot here. Um, the property has a pool on the property, kind of a raised viewing deck over the beach, because these are on the beach. Every one of the villas is not on the beach, but the property itself is right on the beach. So from any of these, you can walk three minutes and be on the beautiful Treasure Key Beach, which is the nicest beach in the world bar none um it's it's insane how nice this beach is and if you want to rent it it was for us for a night like 80 or 100 yeah, i think dollars. after everything it was just over 100 yes. bucks it's and that was during you know an off season that was during a awkward weekend in april but they're cheap if you guys want to come you don't have to have a ton of money nice. there are these you have the beach villa, the ocean villas which are down that way which i'll show you um there are a lot of options to stay here and so Beach villas are definitely something to keep on your radar. Again, I'll link all that kind of stuff down below. And so here we have the property that used to be where the Coco Beach Bar was. And then way back in the day, this is even before my time, they used to have a little ho tiny hotel over there that when my mom was little and coming over here, they used to put friends up in when they'd bring the boats over here. But this is the property that had basketball courts and tennis courts over there, obviously not anymore. Now this area, again, is one of the properties that just is not being touched whatsoever by anyone really at this point until, you know, Treasure Key as a whole sells. And so driving up, you just have this big concrete slab that golf carts used to park here sometimes, but on that side, not bring us over there in a second, there's like a well manicured gravel road lined with palm trees that you could drive up. And then up here where 
this big sand mound is. You can see the rock wall just behind that, and you've got to see the beach right um, in the background. This was the Cocoa Beach Bar, which was an awesome spot. Again, I'll try to find some pictures and videos online, and I'll put them up. That was such a cool, cool spot. The food was good. They had a really good breakfast right on, again, what I just said, on one of the most beautiful beaches in the world. Um, just an awesome spot, and I really hope that the next person who buys it does something at least somewhat similar over there because I know um, the foreign investor from Europe, Austrian, Mirko Kobots, I know his plans were here. It was a pretty high-end, like, bougie thing, which is, I understand you want to make money and be able to charge, you know, 15 to $20 for a drink, but that's not what Treasure Key is about. You know, I, I hope whoever buys it, you know, puts something similar to what was there. Obviously, it's going to have to be a little bit newer and nicer, but keep it low key show up barefoot no shirt on so good a table you know it had a very islandy vibe made out of wood where people could go and take a sharpie and write their name all over the wood it was very very colorful it was really really an awesome spot i love you love you and so yeah so i mean that's what that i'll drive i'm gonna drive over there and kind of show you guys the beach and where it was it, it was really cool so let me get over there and i'll start recording again so this is that really well manicured, um, you know, gravel road I was talking about, lined with palm trees. It was a nice little entrance into the restaurant. Let's drive along here. You come up here and then it would, this was literally what it was before. You just find any random spot and just park there. It wasn't dedicated spots or anything. And then right here where this was, there was like a dock-like entrance where you'd go up and go into the bar. I'm going to go walk just over there to the beach and show you all how nice it is over there. So that's where we just put the golf cart. As I mentioned, there was like a dock-like walkway. You come up to here, and this is where the uh, the cocoa bar was. You can see right here, it's right on the beach. And if this beach isn't the most beautiful beach you've ever seen in the world, I have to think you'd be lying because <laughs> this beach is absolutely unreal. Blue water, it's all fairly deep out here too, so you can pull boats right up to the beach. I don't know if y'all can see it, but over there by the beach club, which I'm going to drive to in a second, there is a boat. I bring my boat over there all the time because that is the only restaurant that's open besides Flo's right now. It's just an awesome, awesome beach. And this property right here is going to be a very, very special property for whatever else is put there. Again, I hope it's a restaurant slash bar that holds true to the values that treasure once was, but who knows? As of now, all it is is a sand dune on a beautiful beach. Nature overtook and kind of brought back what was hers. And so at some point here in the coming years, once the sale goes through, man and mankind will take back over and make it more fun for us. <laughs> this is that beautiful gravel road on the way out from where the Cocoa Beach Bar used to be that I was talking about. It takes you right out on the Treasure Key Drive, the main road around here. So we just parked the golf cart in this parking lot that is directly across on the property where we just were, the Cocoa Beach Bar. This has always been a parking lot. And there's a sidewalk which takes you to the back corner of the marina where the rental boat area that I mentioned was. Here there used to be a building that went through a bunch of different variations. At one point it was a gift shop, it was a spa at one point, then it was another mini medical clinic, but that's all gone. I believe, I could be wrong, I want to say John Cash Realty also had a had a um an office here but you would walk down this sidewalk and right here where it's nothing but grass and rubble you know you can see right here my i'm pointing that used to be the spinnaker restaurant um and that was kind of the more high-end fancy restaurant of the treasure key resort and marina it was right here on the water they had an outdoor deck inside was super grand they had a piano in there a nice upscale bar a bunch of tables and the food was actually really, really good. They had prime rib night. Um, you know, on busy nights, they'd have a piano man in there playing. And I remember when I was little, you know, back in the two, early 2000s, we'd come here with my grandparents and it'd be packed every night. They'd have the piano, we'd go pay them to play songs. But as the years went on and the Meisters kind of lost interest in treasure, um, and it kind of started declining, the restaurant kind of emptied out and now is, you know, 
the last couple of years it was pretty much empty 24 7. we'd be in there a lot but with a couple of tables but that was pretty much it but it was an awesome restaurant and i'm sure some of y'all remember on the wall they had this giant very colorful painting of sailboats um <laughs> of the sailboats and one of the sailboats had a big smiley face on it it was a pretty wacky painting but everyone who went in that restaurant noticed it um remember that painting because i may or may not know where it is there was also a when you walked in the front door there was a big painting on the wall of a marlin jumping hooked with a you know a sport fishing yacht um, catching in the background again i may or may not know where those are those were awesome paintings um and they were just, when we came after the storm to get all of our personal belongings here, we came to see what was up and the people here basically told us that they were building, they were bulldozing the building as is with everything in it. And so I could not let those paintings go to waste. And so I know where they are. I saved them. <laughs> um, the, um, but yeah, and so that's a spinnaker again. I'm gonna find some pictures and videos of what it looked like on the inside and I'll put them up on the screen. I was actually showing Melly that the other day because she never got to see it. So I do have some pictures and I will show you guys um, what it used to be like. It was an awesome spot. And then right here, this is the rental boat area I was talking about. I'll put them below. So that's that parking lot that we just came out of. When you come on the main road and take a right, you're gonna be driving down towards the points of the islands, um, everything kind of there's the, where the Cocoa Beach bar a little gravel road is. Mariner's Cove used to be right here. It's completely destroyed but where the tennis courts used to be um, some people have gone in and put pickleball courts. We actually had a pickleball tournament there yesterday and it was really really fun. So if you enjoy pickleball there is other stuff to do here. That's the courts right there. You drive around to the other side. There's um, people playing right yeah, now. Yeah there's actually people playing there right now but you can kind of see them through that. Right here Across from them, we have what is the beach villas. And these are, and I could be completely wrong in this comparison, but I kind of compare them to the, I mean, these are the ocean villas, sorry. The beach villas were the one I showed you earlier. I kind of compare these to the beach villas, but they're a little more nicer and more high end. And there's a little bit less of them. So you do get a little bit more private space and a little more exclusivity, but they're pretty much the same thing. You know, squares all put together. The property's right on the beach. This is a little swimming pool you have for the area. There's your main office. And so it's a nice little area. Again, if you're coming here and you need somewhere to stay, the ocean villas are a great option. And they're actually really, really nice. Um, and they're on a beautiful part of the beach. And so I, I wanna reiterate that if anyone is thinking of coming here, there is plenty of places to stay and you definitely should come here. There's plenty of things to do. You can rent a boat. You can hire Abaco Tours to take you around and they'll happily take you spear fishing, see the you know pigs, feed the stingrays, feed the sharks, do anything you want to do, feed the sea turtles. And so this, you know, I just want to highlight, there are plenty, plenty of places for people to stay to come here. And so coming out of the Ocean Villa development, we're taking another left on the main road here and you come up to another right turn, which we are going to take because down here are more options to come stay here if you want to stay here. And these. The Atlanta's condos are down here and some of these are still getting rebuilt but a lot of them are ready and they're renting out a lot of them oh they all have boat slips and so you can buy these for a very fair price I don't quote me on this but I want to say they're only like half a million bucks and you get a two or three bedroom condo with a boat slip it's really not a bad situation these are them right here these blue areas the, the blue condos this is the Atlantis condos they're actually really, really nice. Um, and most of these have been rebuilt from the storm. Some are still in process, but most of them are completed. Um, and again, they all have docks on the back side of them. You can kind of see they have their own little pool and tiki bar area through there. But if you want to come here, you want to take a boat and be able to stay right behind where the boat is, this is another fantastic option, reiterating there are places for everyone to stay here and these are actually really nice too and you can you know as you're sleeping roll over in bed look out the window and see your boat sitting in the slip behind it so you can keep an eye on it another really really good option for people and so these yellow buildings these are even more condos that are available for rent actually these ones i don't know how often they rent truly i don't know anyone who stays here or owns any of them so i really don't know if they're available for rent i would imagine that they are but they're super, super nice. They all have their own garage for the golf carts. They all have boat slips on the backside. We have friends who rent boat slips there, so that is an option. 
Um, if anyone needs bosoms or anything, please contact me, and I will um, and I will help you and put you in touch with someone who you know can get a boat slip. We just bought a piece of property over here, so we can give you a boat slip. Um, yeah, and so again, another option you can buy. I know they sell these. I I don't know how many of these rent and how many don't, but. That's if you're interested, it'll all be online. So there are lots and lots of options. All right, now heading further down the main road, we're gonna be coming up here on the left side of these pink buildings. This is the first and original side of the Bahama Beach Club. You can see here, they're just now getting this spot finally finished up. They just put the grass down. Still needs a little bit of landscaping work, but she's getting there ever so slowly. And so this side of the Bahama Beach Club, this is actually the original side um, that was here before the other side that most people now know and love because it's the only one that's been open post Dorian. This side is, there was, I don't know the full story, but I guess there was some kind of political issues that went on that held back the, uh, the rebuilding of this side. But you can see the finally getting there, the landscaping, it, it's getting there, it's a work in progress. Um, fairly plain in my opinion, but that doesn't matter. But these are the units. As I mentioned, a lot of them are still getting built out. This area over here, which I'm gonna to go to now, this was the, um, the pool bar and the grill where you'd come if you wanted lunch and dinner on most nights. The other side, which we'll go to in a second, now they have the restaurant there and the little bar there, but before the storm and before this was all destroyed, all they did over there were, um, you know, group events, weddings, that kind of stuff, and the fancy dinner, steak night, um, Italian night, that kind of stuff, pizza night, um, that kind of stuff. But this was the area where they did everything else. They had a swim up bar, had a nice pool. It would, you know, they had a band that would come out here. They have a deck on the beach. I'm gonna go walk over there and show y'all what's going on. Um, but this is side one, I think phase one through four of the Bahama Beach Club. This is the pool. You can see here they used to have, they have the swim up bar. Looks like, they have fairly clean water coming in here, so hopefully this side is getting near to reopening. The deck over there, we'll walk there in a second, is close to finished. It's getting there nicely. This was the bar area. You know, they're famous for the mudslides to go over there. You can get them. Used to be before the storm. I'm sure it'll be back soon. Out here, the deck where they had all the tables and everything. They had string lights up across to make it a really nice ambiance. And it's kind of centered right here between all the units. It was a super, super, super awesome spot. And then you come in a walkway and there used to be two giant hedges on both sides and go all the way out there to the beach. For whatever reason, the beach here is absolutely massive right now. Around here, the sand just kind of moves around. You know, one summer you can come and the next summer you come to the beach and the sandbars will look completely different. It's just how it goes here. Um, but yeah, it's an awesome spot. Before they open it, they're gonna clean up this beach, get rid of the weeds and all that. Um, but, I mean, you can see the blue water is gorgeous. It's overcast today and it's still shining blue. But again, the Bahama Beach Club is, in my opinion, the spot to be here because, actually, well, let's go to the other side and I'll continue why. And so the next property along the road is the newer side of the Bahama Beach Club. Here she is. That's our actual garage here, but we're going back out. So I'm just gonna put the, the cart right here. This side was finished significantly longer. I mean, significantly earlier than the other side. You can see the landscaping is much nicer. Big old palm trees established, bushes, hedges, the whole nine yards. The layout of this side is the exact same. You know, it's a bunch of bunch of buildings in a semicircle on the beach. This one, this is where I was talking about. They used to just do the. Um, you know, fancy dinners and events out here, but because this side was finished, now this is the full restaurant, lunch here every day, dinner here every day, there's a little bar too. I'm not gonna go too far over there because there are a bunch of people eating lunch and everything and I don't wanna be that one annoying person with the camera, but you can see how back here is super, super nice. The beach is absolutely unreal. They have little grills on the lawn so you can grill what you, you know, bring some meat with you. You can buy charcoal in the mini mart and do some grilling. They have a beautiful pool over there. An absolutely stunning pool over there. A lot of people over there, again, I'm not gonna go be that one annoying person with the camera over there, but super nice. It's indoors, they have a deck out back with seating as well. And 
it is right here on this picture perfect beach we bring our boat up here all the time to hang out and um you know put the boat in get the speakers going have our drinks and everything right there so it's an awesome spot you can kind of see the little outdoor deck area there we were here the other night and i did take a little bit of footage of what the restaurant looks like so i'm going to go ahead and put that on the screen now but it's the only open actual sit down restaurant on the island and the food's really good actually you know the lunch menu is set every day it's a standard bar menu, but five nights out of the week, they do special themed nights. There's a steak night, a taco night, a pizza night, an Italian night, and barbecue a barbecue night. night. Today is Saturday, it's a barbecue night. Um, and then the other two dead nights of the week is just the regular bar menu, but all the food's good. Um, if you're staying here, this is where you're gonna be eating. And it's also the only bar that's open on the island. So you're gonna be spending a lot of time at the bar over there. All right, we're gonna stop in at our unit here because this is where my family owns a spot, the Bahama Beach Club, to get a drink. And while we're in here, I'll just kind of show you the inside of these units because they are really nice. That's the front door. When you walk in, on the right side, you have a little um, room here. Some will have, you know, a queen or a king. We have two little beds. It's a little bit messy because we're packing up to get ready to take the boat back. You have another room here with its own bathroom. This is on the left side, it's dirty. And then coming forward of this room, washer dryer, along with a um, you know communal bathroom for everyone, you know, usable head. Everyone in this room uses this one as well. Walking forward on the left side, you have your kitchen, very large, very nicely appointed, big stainless, um, you know, fridge, stove, oven, microwave, lots of storage. You have a nice dining room and interior decorations and furniture and all that. That is independent of each owner. Um, and so each one's gonna look a little bit different. After the storm, they all kind of got a little bit more normalized as they had kind of a common person to come in and do it all just to get them up and running. And then it was on the owner to customize. And so we customize a little bit, but not too much. So each one's gonna look a little bit different. So you have that. From the kitchen, you have a little bar area here. Again, it's very dirty. We're about to leave. Sitting area. You have a back porch with an absolutely awesome view of the beach. There's a restaurant over there. And then coming here, right off the living room, you have your master, big master bed, you know, drawers, TV, desk if you want to work, nightstands. From here, you have an absolutely stunning view of the beach and the restaurant and all that. This really is a beautiful property, and I keep saying it, but the Abacos is, oof, a treasure key, should I say, is one of the most, you know, beautiful places out there. Going on here, you have a closet here. This is an owner's closet. This is not accessible to renters. This gets locked, but you have a big hanging locker, hanging closet, and then you have your master bath, toilet, shower, twin sinks, and again, a lot more storage. So they're really nicely appointed units. In my opinion, they're the nicest place to stay on the island if you don't want to rent a full on house. Um, we own one, we're unit 2056, so if any of y'all want to come here and rent and want to stay in ours, request unit 2056, but the Bahama Beach Club's a really awesome spot. All right, so leaving the Bahama Beach Club and heading further down Treasure Key Drive, you can see it's a nice drive, the road is, not phenomenal, but it's a, you know, island and the out islands of the Bahamas, really, what can you expect? Again, driving by the Bahama Beach Club here. What's sad is, and I've tried to explain this to Melly because she's never, she never got to see Treasure Key. She never got to see Treasure Key before the storm. Um, what's sad is that it used to be, um, you know, driving through this island used to be you know, super lush and green, big Royal Poinciana trees everywhere um, and all that stuff. And now it's, I mean, it's slowly getting back there, but it's just not as beautiful as it used to be, but it's getting there. It's still an amazing island. Um, I would do want to say one last condo unit. As you drive past the Home Beach Club, you come up on the next one, which is the um, Royal, Royal Poinciana condos. You can see here, beautiful blue. These ones are the super nice. Um, you know, I would, are they quite as nice as the Bahama Beach Club? I would say no, but 
They're very, very nice. They have their own pool. They have their own pickleball courts, again, if that's something you're interested in. Um, if you want to buy one of these, they come with their own garages. You can see, if you look back through there, they're right on the beach too, so really an awesome spot. Again, I just want to reiterate, for people who want to come here and are worried about places to stay, there is more, there are more than enough places to stay and more than enough things to do. Um, so let's continue on down the road. All right, so continuing down in the island, Royal Poinciana for the most part is the last condo units out here. Um, this is more just a, um, you know, the residential houses part of the island. Um, which this island has some really insane, awesome houses. Um, if someone is looking to buy a, you know, a residence or a second home somewhere in this area, I cannot recommend Treasure enough. You know, the island is beautiful. The people here are super nice. There are some awesome houses. Because there's a lot of beach with both the, you know, um, the main beach and then also the windward beach, there is more than enough beach, there are more, more than enough beach houses out there. You can find one. You know, they're a little bit pricey, but nothing over here is really that expensive. Um, the Treasure also has a ton of canals, and so you can, it's very, very easy to find property on, on the water if you want to come over here and take a boat. There are some awesome houses. This house here is my favorite. It's called Someday Came. Gorgeous house. This one, Top of the Rock, is an awesome house. I remember several years ago, um, Miley Cyrus actually was trying to buy that house. Um, she spent some time here on the island and was, I don't know if she had it under contract and backed out or what the situation was, but awesome house. And more of the story, Treasure's an awesome place to have a second home. There are tons of homes, they're beautiful, they have land, they're on an awesome beach. Um, we, my family, we just bought a property over here and we have a realtor, Nicole Fair is her name. She's a good friend of mine and also a very, very good realtor who's very in tune with everything over here. She's who we use to buy stuff over here. And so I'm gonna put her information in the video. I'll put it below. She's awesome. She, this, you know, we just bought a canal piece of property. That piece of property is, um, wasn't listed on the market. She found, you know, an individual who was willing to sell. And this property was literally exactly what we were wanting and more. Um, she's awesome. If you have any real estate needs, please reach out to Nicole Fair. She's absolutely amazing. And she doesn't even know I'm putting this in the video. I just truly believe she's one of the best in the area. And so as we continue down here, down the main road, we're heading down to the point of the island. This is Sunset Point because the sun sets that away. So at this point, you can sit and watch the sunset and it's gorgeous. That giant pink house, I got it. That giant pink house over there. That house is pretty famous here because it's been here for a while. It's giant, it's pink, it's right on the point. Everybody knows the house. Um, that house took a pretty, you know, pretty hard beating during Dorian, um, and it has this hasn't recovered. The owner is actually just trying to sell it now, which it's an awesome piece of property, but in my opinion, it's just not what it used to be. It used to be completely surrounded by beach, which now, as you can see, as I drive up here next to it, it is not. These used to be all sand all the way around with beautiful beach. They had a little like tiki hut thing right here. But since the storm, the sand is all washed away and it just has not returned. Um, and I'm not gonna, I'll put a drone video of it, but I'm not gonna walk around the back of the house because last time I did that, I busted my foot open pretty bad. <laughs> but um, the house is basically falling into the water. So essentially you're just buying this for the property and nothing else. But um, I mean, insane views. You can see the awesome blue water there just a really cool place and this being called sunset point if you want a place to come watch the sunset you know spend an hour out here every afternoon and i promise you you'll never get tired of it the sunset is absolutely Beautiful. gorgeous around here and there's another secret spot in this general area you can see the sunset but i'm not willing to tell you guys where that is because i like having that one to myself there's a couple of locals here who kind of know where it is but that's my spot. If you guys want to come see the sunset, just come to this point by the big orange house and you're still going to get a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful view. Um, down there, you can see the other side of the Sea of Abaco on the other side of Sandy Point. Let me drive over there real quick and just show you what that looks like. So there's that big orange coral house. And so if you just go to the other side of it, you can go here, which is, you know, still the sunset point, but you're on the other side of Sandy Key which I, can we see it from right here? I don't know if we can. Yes, we can. So this right here, this is the point to Treasure Key. That's Santa Key out there. 
And so that's once you get on this side of Santa Key, this is now Windward Beach. This spot, you can't see to watch the sunset from here, but just look at that view. It is absolutely unreal. This used to go way further out. This was a big seawall that held everything in, but as you can see, that's falling apart. And so mother nature is retaking what is hers, but absolutely awesome views. If you just want a spot to come out here and get some, you know, some alone time to sit in the golf cart and stare out with a rum drink, this is the spot to come. Yep, drive, so driving back down main Treasure Key Drive, but this time from the point. So everything we see, if you're coming from the Bahama Beach Club area, it's gonna be on the other side of the road. Um, but this is, um, yeah, the main Treasure Key Drive. And there's an area up here, I'm about to take a left on it. This is to get to Windward Beach and all the house on Galleon Bay and everything else. You're gonna take this, this big blue house right there. This road next to us, we're gonna take. And this is gonna open up to where a majority of the, the residential properties and houses on the island are. And this is, oh, hold on, let me get over the bumpy, the bumpy road, there we go. And so these houses here, these are all on the Windward Beach, which as I just said, is everything on the other side of the point from the main beach. And so every house you're gonna see as you drive down this road, every house on the left side of the road, Every one of those is gonna be on the beach. Um, and then some of those houses rent out. And so if you guys, you know, wanna spend a little bit of, you know, extra coin and have a sweet spot on the beach to go enjoy a vacation with the family, you know, Windward Beach is an awesome choice. It's a little bit quieter than the main beach. It can be a little bit rougher. Nothing out here is really that rough. Our favorite house. Yes. This is like one of my favorite. I absolutely love this house. It's called Salted Towers. It's awesome. But, Awesome. There's also over here right now quite a few vacant properties for sale along the beach. If anyone wants a beach property, you know, come to Treasure. I keep saying it, but I cannot recommend this place enough. There's a lot to do here, a lot of vacant property. And really, compared to the market that we're used to in the United States, stuff is not very expensive here at all. I mean, we just, if someone did not know the real estate market over here and heard what my family just paid for, you know, a hundred plus, you know, piece of property with a hundred, you know, oh, well over 100 feet of you know good dockage out back they would lose their mind <laughs> and so come to treasure it, it's it's an awesome 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 spot so continuing to drive down galleon bay here i mean uh, uh windward beach there is this road galleon bay drive there's a street sign um i'm gonna go down there in a second but first i want to show you guys the point on this island because it's a really pretty area if you don't have a boat here and you just want to go you just want to go have a nice sandbar to go hang out. It's a really, really awesome spot. We're approaching the end of the Windward Beach Road Drive. Um, and so if it's just a cold side, they're doing some construction out here right now. Um, this house is, I don't know if I ever bought it, but it was for sale. But if you're on this cold side, you can look, there's this little trail right here. And you can take golf carts down it. The sand is, pl is plenty, plenty firm until you get all the way out there. But once you get out here, if you don't have a boat over here. You have you, this beautiful yeah, little beach. Beautiful, and it's super windy and overcast right now, so it doesn't look that nice, but it's super nice. Just out on the other side of this little grassy area, there's, you can kind of see a beautiful, beautiful sandbar out there. Come around, if you have kids and everything, there's even a sandbar here. This is a canal with some houses on it. And so this is usually super, super protected. And so, if you don't have a boat over here and you want a sandbar to hang out at, this is an awesome spot to come. Um, it's, you know, it's not going to be as adventurous as taking a boat to a remote island, but it's, it's all you need. You know, it's plenty, it's calm, there's shallow water, there's deep water. I even have some friends who spearfish off this beach in this little canal right here and do pretty damn well. And so, um, yeah, this is an awesome little spot. Just kind of want to show you guys, as I said in the beginning, everything there is to do here at treasure because there is a lot and there is a lot of reasons that people need to be coming to treasure right now and should be coming back it's an awesome island and so i'm going to go back and show you that road we passed galleon bay drive that's where a ton of houses are all these houses on this island here or this land here those are actually on galleon bay so i'll show you a little bit of that there's not a whole lot of houses so i'm really not going to go too far into it um but yeah let's continue on and so driving back down from where that point is, we're here on Galleon Bay Drive. 
You can see the street sign on the, right there. And this again, it's it's all just residential houses. There's not a whole, you know, there's really not much down here. Um, but I'm gonna show you guys the general area, just because there's again some really nice houses, some really nice properties, a lot of vacant properties. If somebody wants to come over here, and you know, start a you know summer home, move here, do whatever you want to do, um, it's just one of the many 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 options you have here. You know, I think. Part of the reason why Treasure is so so popular, as and as you've seen as I'm driving around, is it's a pretty big place with a lot of roads and a lot of private houses and property. So it truly is a it's a very quaint residential community where over the years you can really get to know you know get, get to know everyone here. You know I think that's why I, part of why I feel so connected to it is because I've been coming here since I was half a year old. You know my family's been coming here since the 70s. And so, you know, over the years, you build relationships with other homeowners here and other people who love the island and don't want to go anywhere else. And so that's Everyone a- Everyone knows each other here. <laughs> no, exactly. And Mel Melly's seen it since you started coming yes. with me. Like, it, it's a very, very tight community. It's hard to explain, but it's, I think that's what really sets treasure apart. Everyone's nice. Everyone's friends with each other because it's pretty much pr predominantly residential. You know, you get to know the same people year in and year out and it's just, it's a really good feeling, and I've explained it to some people before. In the, which this is not the right description, but the word I've used before, it, like it has a treasure has a magic feel to it. Like you come here, and it has like an aura to it, something that's just hard to explain. But it, it keeps drawing you back. And I, in my life, have never met a single soul who's come over here to treasure and has not fallen in love with the place and wanted to come back as much as I can. Just a really, really awesome spot. And this actually good timing we're passing this is a buddy of mine's house speaking of people you get to know I this is someone I've got to know over the years I'm a really good friend who's building himself an absolute compound that's a game room over there that's his house really sweet spot but it's about to rain here so I'm gonna turn around and catch up with you all in one quick second once we get to the next spot I want to show you all right so on the on the road to the next place that we're going um, which is I'll show you where I, I took I turned off the main road to turn off to some of these little dirt roads and throughout Treasure there are a bunch of these you know more off the beaten path roads that are just you know as you see dirt and gravel roads. This one happens to be on a canal right here. But we call you know growing up here everyone calls them the, the shortcuts, the golf cart shortcuts, um, because pretty much only golf carts can fit down most of these things. But you can see there's a couple properties for sale, you know, as we come down this road a little bit more, but all it is is a dirt road through the, um, through the woods for lack of a better term. And if, if you know what you're doing, you can use these as shortcuts and really cut off some time getting from one part of the island to the next. But if you don't know, I mean, it's hard to get lost on this island, so you won't necessarily get lost but it is really easy just to keep going in circles um, and not knowing exactly where you're going. But you can see these are, the, these are the shortcuts. So it's about to start raining pretty hard, so we're gonna get in. But at this point, you've seen pretty much everything that- um, Around Treasure. Around here, all the important stuff, the condos available, the businesses, the restaurants, the bars. If you wanna buy a house here, what to do that? If you wanna rent a house, what the canals are. and so. I hope you enjoyed the video. The whole point of that, this video, I just want to update people on kind of where Treasure Key stands right now, what it actually looks like after the storm and where the progress is. And then also really to tell, allow people to see that there is still a lot to do on Treasure. There are still a lot of places to stay on Treasure. If you used to come here and are thinking about it, you should come. It's still an amazing spot. Yes, there's not the tipsy, there's not the restaurants, not the marina, but there's still so much to do. And it's an awesome island. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. If you like the video, please like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of stuff. I have a lot more Bahamas stuff coming after this trip. Um, comment what you guys want to see. And that's it for now. Signing off, Nicole Lynn, my wife, Melly. And we'll see you all in the next video.